Hi everyone, my name is uh, Mike, and I'm co-founder of ManyChat. And I haven't practiced this talk, so please be aware of that. And I'll try to do my best to entertain you and to give you as much info about bots as we have learned over the past 10 months. So uh, what we've learned from building 150,000 bots, uh, what does it mean? Just a brief outline. I'm going to tell you what do we do, then five things that we've learned, and then if you have any questions, we can, I can answer those. So what is ManyChat, and where do these 150,000 bots come from? So ManyChat is a visual bot builder. It allows you to anyone to create a bot without coding. And we started before everybody was talking about bots in the sense of this uh, week of opening of platforms when Kik opened up and Messenger opened up. Uh, actually, Telegram Messenger opened up uh, in July 2015. And since that time, we embraced that one of the first teams to embrace that and built out a bot to create bots. So uh, what, how it would work is you would give us, as, as a user, you would give us your API token, and then we would manage the bot for you. And you would use our visual interface to configure how the bot responds and, and to do broadcast to, through the bot. So launched 10 months ago, this is the growth of the number of the bots created. And today we are sending uh, over six, 600 million messages every month. That's on Telegram. And just two weeks ago, uh, we've expanded to Facebook Messenger. Uh, happy to announce and to brag that reached number one on Product Hunt. Uh, so let's get into the actual interesting stuff and not about, that's about what, where we've been. So what we've learned from building those bots and from what users are behave, how users are behaving there. So content consumption inside bots works. And this is, was one of the main discoveries that for us personally, because when we think about messaging apps, we tend to think that they're really private and personal and that people wouldn't want to subscribe to actually things that would push them and uh, somehow uh, maybe distract them from their friend-to-friend -friend communication. From what we've learned is that right now there is a 50% retention rate in terms of subscriptions. So we have over 12 million subscriptions to the bots that were created on our platform, and six million of those are still active, which means that the person who is receiving the messages haven't deleted the bot or muted it with a command. Uh, it's as you might imagine, it's really easy to delete a bot. You just swipe and you just press one button. So if the bot distracts you too much, you would just do that. Uh, the retention rate that we are seeing with the bots on Telegram is uh, really astonishing to us. And we think it proves one of the main points that people are willing to dilute this channel of friend-to-friend -friend communication with something that is not coming from friends, that is coming from news sources, bloggers, businesses, anything that they're interested in. The other thing is, one of the stats that we've gathered is, uh, bots on our platform are typically sending three, four messages per day, but that's, that's important. That doesn't mean that they are doing three to four pushes a day, because one message can be sent in one burst, so you get like four messages at the same time. So it's really important because if you get a lot of push notifications in different times of the day, it really subtracts from your experience. If you're doing, like, if you, but you can send even 10 messages, it doesn't matter, you, you can send even 20 messages a day if you do it in one burst, because for a person, it's one distraction. So that's one of the things that was important. Um, the second thing is, like, what are the actual use cases for the bots that are created? In our platform, it's not NLP, it's not AI, it's really simple. You can think of this, when, when you think about 
uh, websites that were used uh, that were that were being built in the late 90s uh, or early two uh, thousand um, yeah so there were th these were static websites with static content and people were using those and webmasters were creating those just to showcase what they have like it could be wallpapers jokes anything music their uh, executable uh, uh, like actual programs that they that they use so this is the state of bots that was on telegram for the last year or so and we created a platform that made it really easy for those people for anyone to create a bot to get subscribers and to broadcast messages that's one of the main use cases it's, it lo it works just like email works you gather the subscribers and you broadcast messages or the second use case is to create a content catalog and this is the way you create a you, you create a menu and i'm going to show you how it actually wor how it actually works inside there and these two use cases were like the dominant ones actually this was really interesting a lot of people wanted to create those simpler bots not like the ones and you were talking about the conversation about the ai versus the buttons at the first and we are like living proof that you don't need ai all of the time to create these uh, experiences in the, inside this messenger it is just an interface and if you're creating a, something simple in terms of functionality users will gladly use uh, buttons instead of typing text I'm not saying that text is not like valuable there are like a lot of cases where you need that I'm just saying that don't forget about the buttons and visual interfaces they're not going away anywhere so broadcast subscribe get content uh, it was proven on telegram WeChat has a big platform uh, it opened up the platform three years ago and since that time they have I don't know how you're familiar with WeChat but they have two types of accounts and one of those accounts is actually a subscription account so they actually created an a separate type of account just for broadcasting and it has different types of restrictions based on based on that uh, a type of account line the same thing Viber public chats you just subscribe to those things and uh, you get content so content consumption is really essential and now kick and Facebook are also going in the same direction and catalog the user asks for content manually what are the most like uh, used contents videos music wallpapers uh, and actually one of the main things uh, on what that we saw on telegram was adult content actually a lot of subscribers on that type of content uh, one of the most popular bots until Apple banned those so yeah if you're thinking about growth so uh, <clears throat> use case uh, how you can download apps through a bot uh, let me walk you through like I know that not a lot of people uh, in the US are familiar with telegram and uh, I just want to show you how rich can the platform be if the API allows it so like if we're thinking about kick and Facebook uh, going like further and Skype and all the other platforms uh, we can we can see something from this so don't uh, try to read this this is Uz Uz Uzbekistanian language it doesn't matter just watch uh, the red arrows so you go inside the bot you press the start button then you get this menu and this bot was built on our platform so what we allow the people to do is to create this type of menu uh, and specify how it is laid out and then you can see that there is a, a button that's called Android apps which you can press actually and when you press that you get a selection of like types of Android apps that you can download and you can say like okay messengers and you just get the APKs and you can download them right there no need to go to Google Store or anywhere so uh, like I hope that this content is uh, like uh, legal um, otherwise telegram would have major problems but like whatever <laughs> yeah so let me show you another one listen to music through bots 
uh, totally, also totally legal. So uh, you go inside this also Uzbekistanian bot, you press start, and then you have like this uh, another menu, uh, and you can press the AMP3 button, and uh, you can select from uh, Snoop Dogg or Justin Bieber. And of course, it's uh, Justin Bieber. So, and you get the actual uh, tracks, the actual MP3s. And the most important thing, you actually can listen to them inside Telegram. This is this is how it works. So, yeah, this is uh, how catalogs work. The third interesting thing that we've learned from uh, doing bots on Telegram is that the open rates and the CTRs are. Uh, really high. So, but not for this audience. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, the open rates and CTRs are really high, and the like. Right now, if you talk to developers and ask them what is the open rate on uh, your bots or like the content bots, uh, those people won't be able to answer your questions because uh, the messaging platforms don't tell you actually there is no APIs to get that information right now. Uh, but uh, you can use a proxy for that. And on Telegram there are uh, things that are called channels. And channels are essentially a it's 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 uh, a thing that you can subscribe to uh, that can send you messages, and that's the only thing that I, it can do. So it's like a really simple bot, uh, but that is managed through Telegram. And I'm calling it a bot because I use a really like broad definition of the word uh, bot by an entity in the messaging space, in the mes in the messaging app that is not your friend, for example. Uh, and that is not that is somehow in some way automated. So what we see from these is that the, the open rates are actually 50 to 90 percent. So if we compare the open rates to email, which are 20 to 30 percent right now, we see that this can be a massive and really interesting marketing channel for businesses right now because it's going to get saturated in a few years like in one or two years, it's going to get down to the same uh, percentages, I think. Uh, but right now, the savvy marketers are going to embrace that and to use that and leverage that. And the CTRs are somewhere around 5 to 7%. Uh, the data is, is uh, you have it to take it with a grain of salt. But uh, like if, if it's a link inside a message, those are the CTR rates that you would expect from a message if you send it to your audience. And for, for Facebook Messenger, if you, you can send a structured card with a button, and those buttons get a CTR rate like about twice as high. So it's, it's really interesting also in that regard. Um, the next, like how, how it, w it was counted. So you can see this is a, an account that was sending a message that's linking to some kind of a YouTube video, and it's a channel about Linux. Uh, so it has about 2,000 subscribers, and, it, uh, and they, this particular message gets uh, 1,200 views, so you get that uh, open rate. Or like this is one of the channels that sends you funny pictures, and it has about 3,000 subscribers, and that particular message uh, got two and uh, two thousand six hundred views. So yeah, pretty pretty good right now. It's hard to get those subscribers though. So it's not like on Facebook where you can just send out and buy your audience. Right now there is really uh, it's really hard to get those subscribers. But if you get them, you own them, and that's the beautiful part. So those subscribers are really valuable. It's not like fans on Facebook. Uh, it's it's those people you get inside their messaging app, the most used app on their phone, and that's that is really valuable. So um, yeah, one one uh, one uh, another example, uh, thirteen thousand subscribers, seven hundred uh, seven seventeen thousand views. 
uh, an open rate that's higher than 100%, uh, what the fuck? Uh, how is that possible? How can I, how they, can they be more views than the members? And the answer is that uh, Telegram is really interesting in terms of bot virality and how you can get bots in, uh, like uh, how you can get people to know about your bot. And that's one of the topics that we've been exploring in our discussion with our group. And uh, it's really interesting because other platforms are not building those tools right now. And it's really hard for bot developers to get the like general audience to know about their bots. So there are, we think about two uh, forces that uh, help bot discovery on Telegram right now, which are not uh, available currently on Kik or on Facebook Messenger. And those are, uh, message attribution and group chats. So uh, how message attribution works is that when you send a message to somebody, uh, when you forward a message from a bot to somebody else, that message gets tagged with the bot's name. So it's really, and it links back to the bot. So if you're getting something, if, you're, if, you, if you got some interesting information from a bot and you want to forward it, like a news article or a picture or anything else that you want to share, uh, it links back to the bot. This helps the bot grow. Uh, and the other thing is group chats. And group chats were really valuable in term, like early on when the bots were only uh, starting to spreading out. It's, it's the way that you can get like a lot of people uh, to know about your bot just by adding it to the group. You have to be really like, really careful with that because like groups won't be, uh, the bot has to be valuable to the group, but the ability to bring a bot to the group should be there. And like as, as bot developers, we should uh, talk to the platform developers, to the developers at Kick, to the developers at Facebook, to say that we need those tools uh, to grow our audiences because without those, we are left only with uh, our own audiences and with the bot stores. And the bot stores are like not really that good at uh, promoting the bot. Uh, the bot stores are not like app stores where people go to for every search, where people go for every update, and where people go to just see, like, hey, is there anything um, interesting they, that I can download yet? Unfortunately for the bots, uh, it's not like, uh, hey, uh, what interesting bot can I talk to today? Uh, so, yeah. So how does, <coughs> so how does, uh, it looked like. So this is a picture from the previous slide. I've sent it to my friend uh, Lana Del Rey and it gets, uh, uh, it gets tagged by a clickable link that lin links back to the bot. Uh, and uh, this is a, a group that can have up to 5,000 people and you can add the bot to the group and all members can see it. So yeah, this is a really great way to grow. Uh, this the last thing is base place best place for ads. Uh, it's an end of interaction. Don't push them. It's really invasive. Wait for the interaction to happen and then provide value. And only after that you can place something like an ad or promotion. So going to skip this. This is these are the takeaways. And <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So. Thank you very much, and if you have any questions, I'm available.